What's something your employer did that instantly killed employee morale? One of our senior employees asked for a raise, because it had been a few years since he had had one, and he was doing a great job. Management reviewed his file, realized they could pay one of the new guys half of the salary of experienced guy, fired senior guy, promoted junior dude. They weren't aware of the warehouse dynamic, and soon found out that no one liked or wanted to work for or with junior guy, morale dropped a lot. A week later, senior guy committed suicide. Once the warehouse was informed slash invited to the funeral, morale really dropped, and eventually junior guy became so ineffective trying to run the shop that he was fired, and the next senior guy just kind of took over without management doing anything about it, everything began to run as it had before senior guy was fired. Banned smartphones in the break room to force us to talk to one another and build camaraderie. Ends up we didn't like each other that much. No raises or bonuses this year due to company performance, but I will make it up to you by taking the whole company to the lake for a trip on my new 30 foot boat. In a very short span of time, they changed everyone's 401k plan, for worse, and then implemented an office wide cleanliness policy. No eating at your desk. Only 3 personal items on your desk. Everything labeled. No items other than your keyboard, mouse and monitors on your desk at the end of the day. Talk about pissed off. You could feel the gloom when you walked in. Everyone's give a shit a broke at once. Large factory, not unionized. Each department clocks in at a different place, mainly that department's break room. My department clocked in across the facility from the main entrance, which meant it took about 15 minutes to walk from the front door to where you clocked in and out at and another 5 to walk from that entrance to the parking lot. There was a side exit that we would use, however, that literally cut that walk down from 20 minutes to 3, since our department was right next to the parking lot. Management decided that all employees must enter and exit through the same door. Which meant we had to walk all the way down to the main entrance and then back around to our cars. There was so much rebellion from the employees in our department that they had to bar the door shut with two times fours. Jokes on them, even unionized employees can be a pain in the ass. We contacted the fire marshal, who upon seeing a fire exit barricaded, fined the company $8,000. We still were not allowed to enter through this door, but they stopped trying to stop us. To cut costs, they started a policy that only certain departments had internet access. It basically started a class system that bred resentment across departments, and caused an exodus from the non-internet teams. My boss is looking to retire in the next 3 to 4 years. He told everyone that he wanted us to come up our visions for the company and its future over the next 5, 10, 20 years. We're a small office of about a half dozen people, but we've been growing, and so everyone brought up growth projections and succession planning once he retires etc. His son is the heir, apparent, and has a precocious 8 year old, so in my 20 year version I even included the grandson joining the business, and grooming it to become a legacy company. My boss went last, and we were expecting something acknowledging, some of our thoughts, or at least an expression of appreciation that the company he founded would live on well past his retirement, be in good hands, etc. Instead it was brutal and short. It was something along the lines of, I do everything around here anyway, so I should just sell the company to fund my retirement, and you can all find other companies to work for in a few years. Mood killed. Meeting ended. In a company of 6 people, owner said in a meeting with everyone, that his 2 sales guys are irreplaceable, and that the rest of us are just paper pushers. He now runs a company of 3 people. We were once in the middle of a very stressful period of work, and everyone was feeling it. However, one afternoon, an offhand comment turned into a conversation that we all got involved with, and led to a few laughs. My manager, returning from a meeting, piped up, Oh, we've finished tomorrow's work, have we? What's all this about, insert subject matter. Entire team instantly deflated. Unnecessary. Every employee needs time to blow off a little steam. Former teacher. The administrators at my school were usually pretty chill, but had a habit of randomly coming up with minor rules that they would enforce for us, 
Male teachers had to wear ties even on jeans day, etc. Overall it wasn't bad, except for the time an administrator made a crucial mistake, they banned staff from drinking coffee in front of students. Now, if you've never worked in a school, you'd think this isn't a big deal. When you spend nearly 100% of your day in front of students, it definitely is a big deal. First we tried to find any loophole we could. Energy drinks? Banned the next week. Tea? Banned two days later. It was chaos. Eventually, we realized they couldn't fire an entire school's worth of teachers and aides, so we ended up doing the one thing that private schools fear most, we formed a union. Realistically, it was more of a weird pseudo-union focused specifically on civil disobedience regarding the coffee issue, but it ruffled feathers nonetheless. The administrators caved to our demands, allowed us to drink coffee again, and even bought each of us a reusable coffee mug as a gesture of goodwill. And that's the story of how a handful of school administrators almost accidentally created a teacher's union, over a complete non-issue. Removed COLA raises each year for all employees, and implemented a raise when promoted or take on more responsibility model. However promotions are very rare, and raises are never approved. So everyone is losing money to inflation each year, and they try to sell it as a big win for the employees. We aren't stupid people. And companies wonder why employees leave after 3 years. No one knows. It's a mystery. I think it would be funny to hand in your 2 week notice alongside with resume and cover letter for exactly the same position. With perks written in, 3 year experience in this exact position. Only request readjusted salary on the interview. Oh, and if asked why you left your previous job, my employer refused to adjust salary for inflation. Casually said the best employee was X, and everyone, including X, knew that X was among those who did the least amount of work. Edit, X was the most friendly to the boss, always coming in to say, Hi, do you need anything? fired the girl who was in her third trimester of pregnancy three days before her maternity leave was to start. My wife was let go after she announced her pregnancy to her manager, and approximately when she would need maternity leave. She was told that they'd rather replace her than deal with a pregnant employee and all that goes with that. A well-worded letter from our attorney got her one year's severance, and two years medical coverage for her and the baby. Held a super positive pep rally style company wide meeting about how they were going to start combining our sick days with our vacation days and now just call them PTO this was presented to us as a great thing since we could all now use our PTO days fully as vacation days if we wanted to once the system was implemented everyone realized that instead of getting 10 vacation days and 10 sick days per year we now all had 15 PTO days everyone was pissed head of department realized that we weren't about to meet our targets for the financial year. Completely banned annual leave for 3 months, forced anyone who didn't fill in their timesheet on time to attend disciplinary meeting, despite problems with the system, meaning that some didn't get filled in, and generally had lower management terrified, causing a massive blame culture, and several people to be signed off with mental health issues. In the end, the employee survey which went to his bosses was hilariously bad, and he's now somewhere else making some other people's lives a misery. The best part was when his replacement came in and fired his right hand man who was also a donk. It was a one-two punch. The company wide meeting announced the promotion of several high level management and executives, mostly title and responsibility changes. Lots of smiles and handshakes, not unlike a college graduation ceremony. After these promotion announcements, they declared that due to the stagnant economy and poor sales, the entire company would be experiencing a pay freeze as a result. So, no raises for anyone. They then concluded the beating by discontinuing casual Fridays. So, no more jeans on Friday. It almost felt like it was designed to make people want to quit and leave. It worked though, I and many others moved on to greener pastures within the year. They banned phones, electronics, puzzles, books, etc. from being used at your desk. I work at a call center. We were expected to just sit and wait for the next call to come in, distraction free, even if it was a super slow day. 
told a bunch of people they were going to be promoted to get us to do extra work, no one got promoted. I basically did her job for a month. Me and three of my co-workers quit, and she got fired a few months later. Had a boss everyone loved, then she got transferred to another store, and the new guy that replaced her decided the schedule that we'd all gotten used to needed to be shaken up. He posted the next week schedule that was completely different than it had been under the previous manager, got a bunch of complaints from people saying they can't work x days or y times, and it seemed he was receptive since he took that schedule down. Then suddenly bam, he just reposted the same exact schedule and said duck everyone. Oh, we had some people calling in sick from time to time under the old manager, but this new manager has pretty much half his crew every single day calling out because of his shitty tactics. Here's the first thing to learn about being a good manager, you don't need to shake things up for people to be better workers. You don't need to put your mark on anything if it's working just fine the way it was. Changed up the metrics that determined people's bonuses and included things that were important for the business to know, but completely beyond the control of the people whose bonuses were impacted. For example, we had a right party contact rate, how many times you actually got the person you were calling versus the number of calls you actually made. The problem with the phone number list came from elsewhere, and the people making the calls were just given a list of numbers, and you had to call them all. No leeway. So you're calling blind from a list you don't control, and get penalized if the list is shit. Oddly enough, the people in charge of making the phone number lists, their bonuses were not influenced by right party contact rate. Put up a poster that said, complaining is like vomiting. You feel better, but everyone around you feels sick. The moral was already bad, but it was just a shitty way to take a hit at upset employees, rather than do anything positive was working for EB Games when GameStop bought them. 20% of any warranty, and $1 for every subscription sold went into your paycheck as commission. And you'd never feel dirty selling the things, because Edge Magazine, EB's answer to Game Informer, and their extended warranties were legit, and fairly priced. GameStop buys the company. First thing they do? Nix the commissions. You still have to sell the stuff, of course. I'll never forget the first meeting I had with GameStop as a manager. They really drilled how profitable those things are to the company. Soon after came the threats of reduced hours if you didn't hit quotas, mandated by corporate. Yeah? Duck GameStop. I was one of a large number of programmers working on a project at CSC. We had a deadline coming up in a couple months, and they overpromised to the client, and then asked us all to work extra hard to meet the deadline and asked us to work 50 plus hour weeks. Which we did, and then some, some of us put in 70 to 80 hour weeks to meet this deadline. But once that deadline was met, suddenly there was another deadline they needed to meet. And another. People got tired, had lives to lead, and scaled back on their hours. Most of us were still working 50 to 60 hours a week, but not a lot more than that. Once they realized we weren't killing ourselves on their project any longer, there was an all-hands meeting where the managers told us that they were incredibly disappointed in our lack of professionalism, because so comparatively few employees were now working more than 50 hours a week. One of our harder workers stood up and said, Look, I have three kids. I'm driving an hour into and out of work every day, I'm taking care of my family, I'm trying to get presents for Christmas, write out Christmas cards. Decorate and clean the house for everyone we're having over for the holidays. I'm having a really hard time just getting to 50. And the manager looked at her and sneered, if it wasn't Christmas, it'd be because it's Easter, or Memorial Day, or because it's summer and it's nice out. You'd always have some excuse. There was dead silence in the room. When we left that meeting, we didn't talk to each other, but every single worker on that project put in exactly 50 hours a week after that. Then came Christmas, raise and bonus time. Every worker on the project got a half percent raise, the managers got a five figure bonus. We were pissed. For management, the pain came after Christmas. First week of the year, four programmers had better jobs lined up and quit. Three more the following week. Five the next. We hemo raged three to five programmers every single week for over three months. 
It got to the point where the managers had to schedule a meeting every Monday at 11 to discuss that week's resignations and rearrange the surviving staff. Duck CSC started firing people by lining two up at a time and seeing which one they prefer to keep on. Didn't matter if you were there for 20 years or two. Also hiring management from outside and not promoting within, which means the new managers have no knowledge of anything that company does in terms of ethics, procedures, or employee status. It has turned this click type environment into every person for themselves. Very toxic. They got rid of their night cleaning crew the week after I started, and we had to learn how to clean the whole department on our own before close. I work in a meat department, so this meant taking apart and cleaning two meat grinders, and a bandsaw that were covered with meat goop. Almost the whole department quit because of this, but I stuck around and got the hang of it. After about three months though, they hired the cleaning crew back. Now closing is a breeze. Business had been running for three years, and many of the employees had been there from the beginning without getting a pay raise. After some requests, the company announced that there would be a review of everyone's pay. Called in each worker to discuss. Basically they had decided to pay every employee the same amount. This meant that a few got a raise, most stayed the same, and some, who had negotiated better at hiring, had their wages reduced. Needless to say, most employees were unhappy. Two weeks later the three brothers who owned the business bought themselves two new cars and a second-hand Rolls Royce. That was a real slap in the face.